So when we talk about trying to solve circuits, the analogy I use is a shopping analogy. Now within my shopping analogy, what I'm basically doing is I'm thinking that in a circuit, when we run around from our battery to our resistors and back to our battery, you can think of it being like a shopping mall. When you go to your battery, what you can think of this as being is your bank machine. This is where you get your money and where everyone has to go. And then when you get to a resistor, you can think of this being a store. Now at your store, you're spending money. The equivalent of spending money is considered your voltage. And when you talk about current, current represents the number of people that are running around spending this money. Now there are two ways in which we wire a circuit. The first one we're going to talk about is series circuits. It's called a series circuit because you hit more than one resistor within a pathway. So in this particular case, we have the electrons flow from the negative end, goes through R3 right here, continues along here, goes through R2, comes back through here, goes to R1, and then it goes back to the positive end of the battery. Now what you can think about is that when you're at this battery, what you're doing is you're getting your money. How much money you're getting? You're getting 12 volts. Now the way you can think about it is, if you're in this shopping mall, you how many stores do you have to visit? You have to visit three because that's what's happening within this pathway. So when you're calculating this, you need to figure out that, hey, between resistor 1 here, or R3, R2, and R1, you're going to spend $12. Because as soon as you get back to the bank, you get 12 new dollars. So now the way it works is so we know between spot A, spot B, and spot C, we're going to spend that money. Now in a series circuit, the total resistance is equal to the resistance at every spot. So in this particular case, it's R1 plus R2 plus R3. And if there are more resistors, it would continue to follow this pathway. So in other words, 4 plus 2 plus 6 is going to be equal to 12 ohms. So we know here that our RT is equal to 12 ohms. And as we learned in yesterday's lesson, resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. So if we know the resistance is 12 and our voltage is 12, then by definition, our current has to be 1 amp. So our I total is equal to one. Our I total is equal to one amp. Now current is a lot like people. So if we have one amp worth of people here at the first battery, how many people are eventually going to make it to R three? Well, same thing. It's going to be one amp of people, because those people that were at the bag machine are now all going to travel along our pathway here and they're going to get to the resistor. When they get to the resistor, it's like visiting a store. Since they have to go through, they're going to be spending money. Same thing. These one amp worth of people are eventually going to come back up here, and they're going to get to R2. And at R2, what's the current going to be? One amp of people the total are going to be traveling through here. Eventually, these people are going to leave the store, come back to the store right here. It's the current can be at this one spot, yet again, one amp of people. There's no other pathway for them to go. They have to then go through the first resistor so they can, can travel through this wire, get back to their t the battery, and get more money. So what we can see in this case is that the voltage at the source is the same as the voltage of all the places combined. The last thing we can do is we can calculate the voltage. And yet again, what we're going to use is we're going to use this formula again. So in this particular case, we know that the resistance total is 12. And the current total is 1 amp, so therefore the voltage is 12. What about right here? Well, we know the current at I3 is 1 amp, and we know the resistance is 6 ohms. So if you use the formula R is equal to V divided by I, we know the voltage here has to be 6 volts. Same logic right here. The current at V2 has to be equal to uh, 4 volts. Why? Because there's a resistance of 4, current of 1, R equals V times I. Our last spot right here, so V1, is going to be equal to 2 volts. Now if you take a look at the connection here, we're spending 2 volts at the R1, 4 volts at R2, 6 volts at R3. 6 plus 4 plus 2, it's equal to 12 volts. Now at this point what I would do is I would pull out the cheat sheet that uh, you've seen from the website, it's one of the links there, and you're going to see it looks like something like this. So what we've just done is we looked at a series circuit, and what you're going to see is that the voltage total is equal to that voltage at spot 1, plus voltage at spot 2, plus voltage at spot 3, and so on. We could see that the current total is equal to the current at spot 1, which is also the same as current at spot 2, and so on. And it keeps going. And our resistance here, so RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3, and so on. So that's the logic behind a series circuit. Now if we look at a parallel circuit, what makes a parallel circuit different is that there's multiple pathways the electrons could go. 
So for example, I'm going to have my red electrons right here. I'm going to choose to send my red electrons along this inner pathway. So in this particular case, the red electrons are going to visit one resistor. They're going to visit R1. Now, if you're only visiting one store and you're given 12 bucks, how much are you going to spend at that store? $12. But there are other colored electrons as well. So in this particular case, I'm going to get my green marker. Now, instead of going the first pathway, let's say the green electrons go along the second pathway. Now, they're going a further distance. But in this case, how many resistors does the green electron go through? It goes through one resistor. Therefore, my V2 is equal to 12 volts. And now let's pick a, sec a third color. We're going to have blue electrons. Okay, So the blue electrons are going to travel along here. And we're going to see the blue electrons are going to go all the way in this longer pathway. Yet again, it may travel further, but it's still only going through one resistor. So if it's only going through one resistor, the voltage at spot 3 has to be 12 volts. So we now know what the voltage is at every spot. It's all the same. So if we go to our cheat sheet here, we can see that the voltage total is equal to the voltage at spot 1, which is equal to the voltage at spot 2, and spot 3, and so on. So now, because we know the formula R is equal to V divided by I, we can figure out what the volt current is at every spot. So therefore, we can see right here, current would be equal to V divided by R. So if we pick spot 1, where our voltage is 12 and resistance is 4, we can see that current is equal to 12 divided by 4. So in this particular case, we'll say that for the red electrons, the current is 3 amps. Now at this spot where it's V2, it would be 12 divided by 8. And we would see that the current there of 12 divided by 8 makes the current 1.5 amps here. At our last spot with the blue electrons, again, it's 12 divided by 8, so the current is going to be 1.5 amps here. Now let's think about the logic. We know there are 1.5 amps worth of blue people. There are 1.5 amps of green people. And there are 3 amps of red people. So if we combine all the red people and all the green people and all the blue people, by definition, this has to be 6 amps worth of people. Now this means along here, it's 6 amps, 6 amps along this first pathway here, and then it starts to split off with 3 amps going this way and 3 amps heading in the opposite direction. So 3 amps are the red, and the other 3 amps are the green and blue combined. But yet again, when the green and blue combine are split off, they go 1.5 amps along the second strand and 1.5 amps in the third strand. Now we can figure out the resistance using our formula right here. So if we figure that out, 12 divided by 6 is 2 ohms. Now, how on earth do you get 2 ohms from 4, 8, and 8? Well, this is where we're going to use something called our reciprocals. I would take a minute at this point, and I would look on your calculator, and I would look for a button that says x minus 1, or 1 over x. Take a minute and find that before you continue. So now, I'm going to do this question the long way. I'm going to do it the long way this one time, and from here on in, what I would expect you to use is use your calculator instead. Okay, the formula in this case is known as the reciprocal. Okay, and that's the button you're looking for. And what that basically says is we're not adding the numbers up, but we're adding up their opposites. So 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3. So in this particular case, we can see it's 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8. So doing this a long way, we know that in order to add these together, we have to have a common denominator. The common denominator in this case is 8. So really, it'd be 2 over 8 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8. So basically, 1 over RT is equal to 4 over 8, which means RT is equal to 8 over 4, which means my RT is equal to 2 ohms, which we could see we figured out over here was also 2 ohms. So we, when we look at our cheat sheet, what you have to remember is that current in this particular case added up. So IT is equal to I1 1 plus I2 plus I3. And in this case, for the resistance, it is 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and so on. So this shorthand, what you can basically say is that in a series circuit, voltage is the same, current adds up, and resistance adds up. In a parallel circuit, voltage and current are the exact opposite of one and over. And then with here, it's going to be the reciprocals.
Now, series or circuits were wired as simply a series or parallel, this would be very easy. In the next video, I'll show you what happens if they're more complicated.